As reminds what William Blake said, he said, man must and will have some religion. If he has not the religion of God, he will have the religion of Satan. Yeah, well, that's, I'm afraid that, that's it. The, the religion of God, there are four or five. It's the Catholic religion, the real Catholic religion, not the falsified Catholic religion. And uh, anything else is more or less satanic. And therefore, Protestantism is, is at least in part satanic. Mohammedanism, I mean, you, you get in all kinds of trouble for saying these things, but that's why they were Catholic martyrs from the very beginning of the Catholic Church. You get killed if you say these things. Let's come back to this idea of the hollow, hollow hoax, or whatever you want to call it, being a, a ersatz religion today, uh, as, the, as the compulsory new civic religion that's pushing out the tired old religions of yesteryear. Yes. It seems to me that for any politician to get access to deep emotions and deep reverence, you just have to say those words, Holocaust and Auschwitz, uh, and you have that tremendously solemn uh, power over people. Yes. Uh, and, and the deep religious emotions, you, the concept yes. of atonement, of guilt, of never-ending yes. guilt, yes. of the Jews as God's co chosen people, yeah. uh, and of uh, uh, sort of ultimate religious themes, are, are given to this story. Yes. Uh, the innocent victim is the Jewish people. The Redeemer is the six million who died. Mm. The uh, sacrificial victim is the six million who died. Uh, the Mount Calvary is the concentration camp of Auschwitz. It's incredible, but you've got... And is, is Eli Wiesel, the high priest of the... Uh, uh, as it were, and he's now being <laughs> shown up to be a, 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 a hoax. Shown up to be the greatest liar ever lived. At the the, there's no, there's no tattoo on his arm. There's no concentration camp <laughs> tattoo on his arm, apparently. You know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. But, but uh, on the other hand, it's totally believable. G.K. Chesterton said that when, when people stop believing in God, they don't believe in nothing, they believe in anything. And the Jews have this ability to, they have this sense of religion. Mm -hmm. Because for 2,000 years, from Abraham through to our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Lord, or the, the Lord God, took them apart and, and gave them very special treatment. He punished them when they were naughty and he rewarded them when they were good. Mm. They were his people. They were to prepare, they were to be the cradle of the Messiah. And when the Messiah at last came, they were his cradle. And there were some marvelous, marvelous people, like the Mother of God, like St. Joseph, like the Apostles, who uh, surrounded our Lord and enabled him to launch the true religion, of, of the true and everlasting religion, the eternal, the eternal, the new and eternal testament, which is, um, Catholicism, but uh, if that religion goes, then something else has got to take its place. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Jews, for 2,000 years, they, they had the Lord God in their bloodstream, in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. it, it, then pride, when, the Messiah, when their Messiah finally came, mm -hmm. pride took over and they refused him. Mm -hmm. But they still had that training in the bloodstream, mm -hmm. and therefore ever since, they have had a special ability to create s a false substitutes for the true religion. Mm -hmm. And the last and perhaps supreme example of this is, is the Holocaust religion. Mm. And yeah. it is... It is it, and if I may come back to the wonderful clear words you spoke on that video, you said, the evidence is overwhelmingly against the idea of mass human cyanide gas chambers. Okay? Yes. Now, I think it's terribly important to appreciate, I'm speaking more as a science historian, okay, but these mass human cyanide gas chambers have never ever existed on planet Earth. Nowhere, never. They are just a phantasmal nightmare. They're a nightmare hallucination brewed up at Nuremberg in 1946 mm. by British and American military intelligence, mm. okay? And made compulsory, as you point out, made compulsory for German to, Germany to believe. Mm. And uh, uh, I think that uh, that total non-existence is, uh, well, it's partly why, why, the, <laughs> why the Holocaust has this transcendental meaning in our modern civilization. That there's no trace of any material documentary evidence for these chambers existing. Yeah. That, that they're, they're a kind of, uh, kind of spiritual, hallucinatory thing, yeah. which... Uh, if you question it, you immediately become, oh, you're a Nazi. Oh, are you some kind of Nazi? 
oh god you're so anti-semitic yeah. and that's always the response i mean yeah, i've I i've had this for a couple of years and i suspect you've had it too the people don't come up and ask you what you're talking about i know they don't want to discuss this up i know i know that's what's so amazing yes i mean i've always <laughs> been used to having offbeat interests and strange subjects that a few people want to talk to me about yeah and when i came out on the basis of chemical investigation the chemical evidence was saying uh, the zyklon in the german labor camps went to ordinary normal hygienic mm. purposes just as it was supposed to do mm. um people just aghast and i yeah, get I know. you get lambasted as an answer yeah. uh, and it's as if people's minds just slam shut like a steel yeah, trap that's right that's so extraordinary that's right and that's the power of the lie from, you know, it's the power of Satan. In the Garden of Gethsemane, our Lord says, uh, this is your hour and the, the power of Satan. You know, this is the hour of darkness and the power of Satan. This is... And at, at the moment, at that moment was a tremendous moment of Satan when the crucifixion, the putting to death of our Lord was being prepared by the high priests and then it was put into action and then the Romans were triggered to do it for the Jews. Um, that was a moment of Satan and I'm afraid that t today in the world is a moment of Satan. Um, if we come back to these, uh, the, the, the wonderful phantasma hallucination that, <coughs> that all good citizens in our society believe in with terrific deep power, these yes. mass human sign Augustine, even though there's no pictures of them or nobody has an yes. image of them at all, uh, it seems to me, I'd just like to put this to you, that there's five different levels of, of non-existence. Firstly, there's no trace of any documentary evidence mm. in the Third Reich of any intention to mass exterminate. Mm. So if you want to believe that this mass coming of Jews went on, you have to believe it was some sort of ESP process. They did it without <laughs> any documents. Yeah. Okay? Secondly, there's no trace of any bodies. So the six million Jews gassed. Right. There's no pile of them, no remains of bones. They must have had magic wands to make them all vanish. Yeah. Okay? Thirdly, there's not one single documentary record of death by cyanide poisoning in any German labor camp. Yeah. The enormously extensive literature uh, remains kept and people are going through it in great detail. It's all about, it's all about the Aralson archive and not a single cyanide poisoning. Yeah. Okay? Fourthly, no photograph anywhere at all of what would be the most bizarre, extraordinary scenes in the 20th century. You know, <laughs> piles of bodies, maybe mixed mm. gender, shoveled out of these. No photos at all. Uh, and last but not least, if you go to the German labor camps now, the remains, there's nothing that credibly resembles a human gas chamber, yeah. okay? I Except, know. of course, for the uh, post-war constructed one. That, uh, I know, but you're, trip, you're yeah. up against a religious belief. You just said it yourself. It's deep and it's, it's a steel trap. It's, it's the only religion that many people have still got left. It's the only thing sacred. It's the, it's the only sacred landmark remaining in in godless people's lives yeah, yeah. people need something sacred and the only thing sacred left for many people today is the six million victims of nazi horror that's all that's left that that is the ultimate evil and therefore the jews are good therefore the germans are no good therefore america must help therefore 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 and therefore we get the new world order it's very, yeah. it's very so, uh, as a priest as a christian priest do you have a duty to challenge that uh, that which is sac most hate sacred and holy thing it, the most sacred icon in our civilization i mean nowadays you can scoff at the resurrection mock any sacred dogma you can throw a holy book down the lavatory and uh, nobody is really bothered but if you challenge the holocaust people are deeply shocked and suddenly half your friends aren't speaking to you anymore uh, and you know that you're a heretic uh, and, and you go through all this basically religious experience of being damned. Uh, I mean, is it really the business of a priest to uh, challenge this? Uh, let me answer. <laughs> let me answer you with a counter question. Um, in the, let's say we're in about the year 100 or 150. In other words, under the Roman Empire, we're in Rome, oh. and you're a 15-year-old girl, one of the Virgin Martyrs. Is it your business to go up and challenge the emperor? No, it isn't. If the emperor comes after you, then you've got to, then what, what the Catholic Church teaches is this. If you're challenged in your faith, you've got to respond. But if you're not challenged, you don't have to say, that you don't have to declare the whole faith in all circumstances. In other words, um, you, you, if somebody asks you directly and point blank, 
is this true, is this true, is this true, that your faith says? You've got to answer yes, 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 if it is true.